Before we start the video, I'd just like to introduce our new revision package. For $10, you get 7 days access to our entire ACCA performance management exam course. For more details, please check out the links in the description below. And now, on to our video. Hello everyone, and how are you all doing today? So, today we're going to be doing another practice question for the ACCA performance management exam or rather I should say practice questions because what we're going to do is we're going to do a set from section B for five multiple choice questions. And this set is from the September 2016 paper, right? So the September 2016 paper from then onwards, the papers have been following a fixed format where they are section A with uh, 15 standalone MCQs, section B with three sets of five MCQs each and section C with two 20 marker questions. So, so, so this is the format you'd have in the exam and we're gonna do one of the case scenarios from section B, five questions, and the topic is flexed budgeting, right? And it's a topic which has become more and more popular in recent settings, not just in the exam as a whole, but also in section C. But we'll be doing some section C question practice later, okay? so. As always, let's start with reading the question rather than the case scenario, right? That way we'll know when we go through the case scenario, we'll know exactly what information we need to pick out. So the first question says, assuming the budgeted figures are correct, what would the flex total production cost be if production is 80% of maximum capacity? Okay. So let's read the case scenario. It says Corfeco is a business which manufactures computer laptop batteries and it has developed a new battery which has a longer usage than bat the batteries currently available in laptops. The selling price of the battery is uh, forecast to be $45. So the only thing that matters here possibly might be the selling price, okay? The maximum production capacity of Corfeco is 262,500 units. And remember, in our question they said, if production is 80% of maximum capacity. So rather than going further, first let's just calculate 80% of this capacity. So we take our calculator, 262,500 into 80% gives us 210,000, right? So let's just make a note of that over here. So in the exam, obviously you wouldn't be writing on the computer screen. You'd be taking these notes on the rough piece of paper that they would provide. If, if, they, if they don't have any paper on your desk, you can just ask the invigilator for some. And please do that at the start of the exam, especially if you like to write down a lot because they might run out of paper, right? So you better be safe rather than sorry. Okay, the company's management accountant is currently preparing the annual flex budget and we have this data given. And what did I say? Whenever you see production of units, multiple different levels of activities and the cost at those levels of activity, you immediately think high low method. Okay. And we've been given our 210,000 units. So the costs here are material cost, labor cost and fixed cost. Okay. So there's a small twist here. Usually when they give you a table like this, it'll be material cost, labor cost and overheads. Okay and material and labor costs are purely variable. So we don't need to necessarily apply the high-low method. We can simply divide the cost at any level with the number of units because all the costs are variable. For overheads, we need to use the high-low method because overheads are both variable and fixed. But in this case, it's just fixed, right? There is, so basically we don't have to apply the high-low method here. What we'd simply do is first find the material cost per unit, then the labor cost per unit, and add, multiply the sum of those with 210,000 units, add the fixed cost as well, okay? But let's just read through the rest of the case scenario in case there's more information. In addition to the above costs, okay, so there is more, the management accountant estimates that there will be an increment of, uh, that for each increment of 50,000 units produced, one supervisor will need to be employed. Okay, so more cost and a supervisor's annual salary is $35,000. Okay, the production manager does not understand why flex budgets have been produced as he has always used fixed budget previously. Okay, that's just fluff. Right, so let's do our calculation. Let's start with the material cost. So the material cost, let's just take the middle one, right? Nice round number. So $800,000 
for a cost of 200,000, right? So four technically. Four dollars material cost, okay? And labor cost is 1.1 million divided by 200,000. So it's 5.5 dollars. Add them up together. We have 9.5 dollars material and labor cost for prime cost per unit and 210,000 units. So multiply that by 210,000. So we get 1.995 thousand and add the fixed cost as well, 750,000. So, so far we have a cost of, let's write it down, 274500, okay? But we still need to add the cost of the supervisors. Now it says for each increment of 50,000 units produced, one supervisor will need to be employed and each supervisor's salary is 35,000. So we have 210,000 units. So how many supervisors will we need to hire? So this is a trick actually, because we'll think, okay, 210,000 over 50,000 is around 4.25. We need to hire four supervisors, but no. It's for each increment of 50,000 units, right? So every time we're producing 50,000 more units, we need to hire another supervisor. So till 200,000, we would have hired four supervisors, but we still would have had 10,000 units left. Even though it's not a full 50,000, we would still need to hire a supervisor to manage that because the four supervisors are fully occupied with the 200,000 units as it is, right? An alternate way to think about this is, for example, if we say there are 210 students and we, there, a classroom has a capacity of 50 students per class. Four classrooms would get us 200 students, right? But for those 10 students, we can't fit them into any of those classes. We would need an extra class, even though it won't be full, right? Same here. So we'll need five supervisors at a salary of 35,000. So we can add to this five into 35,000 to get two, 0.92 million. So the answer is D. Okay. Well, from my experience, students mostly make the mistake of taking four supervisors instead of five. So please be careful. Okay. Let's move on to the second question. So it says the management accountant has said that a machine maintenance cost was not included in the flexible budget, but needs to be taken into account. Okay. The new battery will be manufactured on a machine currently owned by Corfeco, which was previously used to for a product and has now been discontinued. The management accountant estimates that every 1000 units will take 14 hours to produce. So notice how we go through the fluff, but we underline any numbers that we come across. The annual machine hours and maintenance cost for the machine for the last four years have been as follows. And they've given us this data. What is the estimated maintenance cost if the production of the battery is 80% of capacity? So 210,000 and it's to the nearest uh, thousand. Okay. So we need to produce 210,000 units. We have this and they've given us a cost, but it's in terms of hours. We have units, but they've given us up here that the data that a thousand units take 14 hours to produce. So if we have 210,000 units, we divide that by 1000 to get 210, every 1000 takes 14, so we would need 2940 hours, okay? And once again, in hours we have four different levels of activity, meaning we need to use the high-low method here. And since the maintenance cost, they haven't broken down whether it's fixed or variable, we would need to use the high-low method. So high-low method, remember, we always go by the activity levels. So the lowest activity level is 1,800 and the highest is 5,000. And we'll take the corresponding costs, which are in thousands, okay. So first the variable cost. So 850,000 minus 450,000 is equal to 400,000 divided by 5,000 minus 1,800. Right, so that gives us 125. So the variable cost per unit is 125. Okay, and for the fixed cost, we have the equation y is equal to the fixed cost a plus bx, b being the variable cost, in this case 
x we can take any combination of x and y let's take 5000 and 850 so 850,000 so it will basically be 850,000 is equal to a plus 125 into 5000 right so a is basically 850,000 minus 125 into 5000 so 850,000 minus 125 into 5000 gives us 225,000 okay so our fixed cost is 225,000 our variable cost is 125 per hour and we have 2940 hours so our total cost would end up being 125 into 2940 plus 225,000 592,500 to the nearest thousand that would be 593,000 so it is B okay so break it down step by step and the calculations become quite simple let's move down to the next question okay it says in the first month of production of the new battery actual sales were 18,000 units and the sales revenue achieved was 702,000 the budgeted sales units were 17,300 based on the information which of the following statements are true when the budget was is flexed, the sales variance will be will include both sales volume and sales price variance. Okay, and the other statements are just variations of this, so it will only include sales volume. It will only include sales price variance. Uh, if the budget is flexed, the sales variance will include sales mix and quantity variances and the sales uh, price variance. Okay, well. Technically, the last one, mix and quantity variances, if you add them up, you get the sales volume variance. So it's pretty much identical to the first statement. So I don't think either of those would be true because they're the same statement. So it's neither A or D, but the basic concept being tested doesn't have much to do with the numbers actually, okay? What's the concept being tested? If the budget is flexed, Will the sales variance will on, will only include the volume or the price variance? Okay. Now I want you to think about this. When we flex the budget, what do we do? We remake the budget, and instead of using the budgeted sales units, we use the actual sales units. Now, which of these variances has to do with the number of units? The sales volume variance, right? So the sales volume variance, you take your actual and versus your budgeted, right? Your actual sales unit versus your budgeted sales units and that would be 18,000 versus 17,300 but if you flex the budget the budgeted number of units become the actual as well so you're comparing the actual to the actual and when you do that the net result will obviously be zero so your sales volume variance will go down to zero so what that means is basically that your oops that that your sales volume variance will be zero and the sales variance as a whole is price and volume variance combined that means your only uh, relevant variance for sales would then be the sales price variance so the answer would be c okay and this is just a simple concept that you should know in any case if the budget is flexed budgeted units become actual units sales volume variance becomes zero okay since they might ask a variation of this question okay let's move on Okay, good, another theory based question. And whenever you have a question like this with options one, two, three, four, and a combination down below, go by the statements you're sure about, okay? So the question is regarding the preparation of a flexible budget. Statement one, the budget could be time consuming to produce as splitting out semi-variable costs may not be straightforward. Yeah, for a flexible budget, we're preparing budgets for different levels of activities and fixed costs could become step fixed costs, variable cost per unit would change across different levels of activity. So we need to be clear about the cost behavior and the semi-variable costs and what they act like in order to prepare the budget. So this is correct. So the first statement is correct, which means D is eliminated as an option. Okay. Now of the remaining options we have, if four is correct, that means C is the answer. Let's see. So first let's look at four, right? The budget will encourage all activities and their value of, to the organization to be reviewed and assessed. No, that's not true. Because in a flexible budget, we're preparing uh, 
different budgets for different levels of activities, but we're not actually reviewing the activities and their value to the organization. That comes under activity-based budgeting, right? Not under flexible budget. So no, four is incorrect. That means C is also incorrect, okay? So between A and B, you can see one and two are both correct just by that virtue. One we've already seen. Just for revision sake, before we look at three, let's go through two as well. The range of output over which assumptions about how cost will behave could be difficult to determine. Yeah, so what they're basically saying, and it's true, that over time, technically, for example, fixed costs are fixed only for a certain range of output. Eventually, they'll become step fixed costs. Likewise, variable cost per unit is only constant up to a certain range until it becomes more or less depending on the situation. So it could be difficult to determine that. That's fair enough, as in there's nothing wrong with that statement. Anyway, let's look at the third one. The flexible budget will give managers more opportunity to include budgetary stack, there's the buzzword, than a fixed budget. No, that's not true. Like we said, flex, flexible budget, we're simply adjusting the numbers. There's no opinions involved. There's no uh, thinking involved as such. You're just doing a calculation. And budgetary stack generally has nothing to do with fixed or flex budgets. It's more likely to be something that you would find in uh, participative budgets or uh, bottom-up budgeting where the lower level staff also has a say in the matter, right? Budgetary stack being that you make the budget targets easier so that you can achieve them. So three is incorrect. That means the answer is A, okay? Let's move on to the last question. Oh, good, another one like this. The management accountant intends to use a spreadsheet. So there's our IT concept for the flexible budget in order to analyze the performance for the new battery. Which of the following statements are benefits regarding the use of spreadsheets for budgeting? So it's more about spreadsheets than budgeting. The user can change uh, input variables and a new version of the budget can be quickly produced. Yep, the, the good thing about spreadsheets is if you have your formulas ready, you can change the input variables and immediately everything will be updated. So first is correct. That means D is eliminated as an option. Now, if you look at the remaining three options, four is included in all of them. So we can already say that it's correct. Let's just go through it for recap purposes. Managers can carry out sensitivity analysis more easily on a budget model, which is held in a spreadsheet. Yeah, it makes uh, those sorts of calculations easier. Okay, so now, unfortunately, we need to assess both two and three in order to eliminate all the options. Okay, let's go through them. Errors in a formula can be easily traced and data can be difficult to corrupt in a spreadsheet. No, data can be very easy to corrupt in a spreadsheet. You can easily make one typo and it can be difficult to trace that if you have a lot of data in the spreadsheet. So two is incorrect. So B is also eliminated as an option. And three, a spreadsheet can take account of qualitative factors to allow decisions to be fully evaluated. Qualitative factors being non-numerical, quantitative being numerical, qualitative being like how good is something or something, right? No, so no, spreadsheets are all about numbers. So they don't take account qualitative factors like people's opinions, etc. They only take account, into account quantitative factors. So three is incorrect. So that means the answer is C, okay? So we're done with this set of MCQs. Uh, so what did we learn? Basically, we learned we had more of a recap, but some things that should be highlighted once again. When it comes to flexible budgets, first of all, remember, sales volume variance becomes zero under a flexible budget. That means only sales price variance is uh, a sales variance, okay? Uh, the, these were simple calculations with a high-low method. What you need to be aware about is just the tricks. For example, when they gave you a table, they had fixed costs separate from variable costs already. Generally, this table means high-low method. In this case, you didn't need to do it. So, I mean, technically you could have done it like for any level you added them all up, but you would still have gotten fixed cost of 750,000 and the variable cost that we got of 9.5, right? Okay, but apart from that, it was quite a straightforward uh, set of MCQs, but the reason I wanted to do it is because flexible budget is becoming a more and more popularly tested topic recently. So I hope you guys benefited from this video and I'll see you guys next time.